So once the powertrain is out of the car, got to remove these coolant crossover tubes here. We'll do that by separating some hoses down here, which as usual are not easy to get to. I ordered up a, a little GoPro headlight cam, so hopefully future videos should be coming in on Monday that are a little bit brighter. So when we're actually doing the timing chains and everything on the heads, it'll be easier to follow along. So I know I'm casting some shadows and whatnot. Now that the coolant pipe is off, we could take the exhaust manifolds off. Start with this side first, working from inside to out in a alternating fashion. Oh boy, that's the whole stud. Not good. <laughs> wow. So, again, with this side, start inside. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know how I'm going to get that one at the bottom. Let's see what we can get. Oh, it's out. Ah, uh, I lost it. Doesn't matter. Those are one time use nuts, so it's not a big deal. I'm not mistaken, this should come right out. Oh, look at this thing. Oh, man. That's gonna, that's where part of the exhaust leak was, right there. Disintegrated. Take this off, get this O2 out of here. This one's already disconnected. There's another one way down there. Holy shite. I don't even know where all these go. This one, it just, it just goes. <sighs> yeah, I don't even. I can't even tell where it finishes. Note to self, gray is left, green is right. I don't know, I don't know if this is the right one. One, seven, three, two, four. I don't know if it's the one six or the one sevens that go up top, but this does not look anywhere near as long as this.
And it's certainly not the same color. It's an 802. 802 is a one zero. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta check these things out again, but I'm a little concerned here. So left oxygen sensor. This is for cylinders nine and ten. Is gray, gray, it's 827 marking. This came out really nice. I don't know if it's just because or if it's the croil. Man, that stuff is awesome. Right bank, O2 sensor, four cylinders, four and five. Green, marking 825. That's free, that's free. The bottom O2 down here is not free. Uh. Wow. Man, this thing, this is a tight package. MLS gasket. Man, there's so many O2 sensors. I certainly regret not doing that earlier. Oh, that's what they say. They say, down there, take that out first. I didn't listen. Shit. All right, got all the old two sensors out. Should have taken it out before, but it's loose. <sighs> Woo! That's the big boy. Here's the source of the exhaust leak. <laughs> There's nothing left of that pipe right there. It was just blowing out. Sound like shit. Hey, Bear. Hey, buddy. He always keeps me company in the shop. Got the left or bank two uh, exhaust manifold off or header, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's kind of a mix of a header and a manifold because nine and ten dump right into each other. So it's not a nice, not a nice design. It's all designed for. Uh, quick catalyst light off. Um, so yeah, but anyway, got it off. Really uh, kind of a cool, interesting thing about this engine is uh, may maybe the V8 version is the same, but uh, I'm honestly, I don't know. Uh, what I do know is the cert belt, the only thing this drives is the alternator, which is actually also water cooled. I don't know how many amps it is, maybe 180, 200 or something. So the AC compressor and power steering, all of this, well the power steering is driven off a, a gear I believe back here, but the AC compressor is just uh, driven off by this jack shaft. So it's actually got a little drive shaft from the rear timing drive 
all the way to here. So that's pretty, uh, pretty neat. And here's the water pump as well. Well, the thermostat housing. And I don't know. I guess that is the actual thermostat's probably in here, and then the water pump is here. Something like that. I got some distribution blocks. I don't know. We'll find out soon enough about wh what everything is. These guys in here are the secondary air injection ports also utilized for uh, catalyst light off. Um, so since I will be gutting the cats and running uh, aftermarket 200 cell units, I'm considering just blocking this off because sometimes, for some reason, the pump will not activate when you cold start the car. And there's enough pressure here that you get a, a back feed all the way to the SAI pump that's mounted on the chassis. There are some soot marks there. Um, I kind of like it only because it uh, sounds pretty badass when you when you start it up. Otherwise, it's and it's, uh, it's definitely pretty dirty in there. These DI engines produce a whole lot of uh, particulates and soot. And obviously, just oil everywhere. Gonna have to spend quite a bit of time degreasing it. I don't like putting dirty engines back in. Yep, all of this I hope is just residual from here. Most likely power steering pump. And also later I'm also gonna show uh, that one uh, power steering return hose that blew on me. So gonna be able to, um, gonna replace all that. You gotta take all the heat shields out from the inside of the car on this side. But now's the time to do it. Honestly with how much effort this takes, it's like I almost wanna replace all of this. But that's way, way, way too much money. Also down here, what I was complaining about earlier, you definitely, definitely want to separate all these O2 sensors over here. I didn't do that and I had a hell of a time uh, trying to get this guy out. So I ended up twisting this around. I hope it's still okay. Uh, it might, might, might be all right. Worst case, uh, well, I did fray this little plastic cover here, rubber cover. Uh, if it is a little frayed, it's not too bad to get out, but this uh, joint right here rests right here, so it's a little difficult to access, but it can be done in vehicle. And honestly, I'm, I'm in way too deep just in seals and non-reusable bolts, so uh, I'm just going to run that one. And as I showed in the other one, this guy just completely fried, had big exhaust leaks over there. This is going to be replaced. All of this back is going to be replaced with a uh, aftermarket unit. Well, I'm just going to custom make it because there's nobody. Uh, JH Motorsports makes a nice aftermarket version, but we're just going to have to make this all ourselves. Now we're going to go ahead and return, or now we're going to go ahead and remove the bank one, right side, exhaust manifold. Uh, also, you need to remove the coolant manifold here. So I assume we're gonna take off, take off the hose from here, here, undo this bolt, this bolt, and I already took off the uh, clamp over here. So loosen these all up. Come on. Uh, I goes to the engine oil cooler, I assume. Yeah, because trans oil cooler is underneath in between the subframe. Engine oil cooler is here. 
So a member on Audi World also was uh, experiencing coolant loss. Blackstone Labs did a test for him and determined there was uh, some percentage, less than uh, less than 10% of coolant in the oil, but he never noticed any kind of milkshake, any kind of contamination. So I'd also like, uh, since I also have disappearing coolant and I have no other traces, uh, I might even want to pull the engine oil cooler off and pressure test it. We'll see about the trans cooler as well. Uh, when I dropped some fluid out of it, it looked completely fine. I mean, I did service it not too long ago, but it looked normal, red. Uh, usually if there's any coolant contamination after running it, obviously you have to check it after running. Uh, it'll be a little pink, slightly milky, similar to engine oil, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Damn! Come on, man! Gotta pull off this motor mount. Whoa! Holy shit! Man! Now I gotta get one of these too. Look at that, we have a mixture of triple square and Allen. So, one step closer to separating the transmissions from the engine.